Continuing our journey into electrochemistry, we're going to talk about cell potentials, how that relates to Gibbs free energy as well as equilibrium constant K, and this will cover chapters uh, sections 17.3 and 17.4. And so there's the learning outcomes expectations, uh, short list, but pause and feel free to read through those. All right, so we'll, we'll continue with 17.3 where we'll talk about electrodes and cell potentials. And so previously we introduced this idea of a galvanic cell, right, where we can put, you know, copper metal on one side, we can put silver on another side, and we can have silver ions turning into silver metal and copper turning into copper 2 plus, and we're going to get a potential out of this. This is two half reactions compartmentalized by a wire and a salt bridge, and we're going to get a voltage and a current out of this. And so um, this voltage, uh, it turns out it's, it's something we describe as the cell potential. This is basically a measure of the energy per unit available from the redox reaction. It basically says, you know, how much driving force is there for these electrons to move across and go from one electrode to another electrode from going from the cathode to the anode, or sorry, the anode to the cathode. And so that's going to be dictated by the materials as we saw the difference between copper and silver or say uh, zinc and copper. That's going to dictate the cell potential or how much voltage we can get out of one of these cells. And so we have a half reaction at the anode, we have a half reaction at the cathode where reduction is occurring, oxidation is occurring at the anode. Oxidation meaning the species is giving up electrons, reduction meaning the species is accepting electrons. Uh, but basically this cell potential is going to be dictated by how easily this gives up electrons and how much this wants to take those electrons. And so we can actually calculate this numerically if we, if we know uh, essentially the energy of the cathode, energy of the anode, we can figure out the cell potential or the, the electrochemical potential energy of the overall cell is going to be dictated by the two components. How, how easily does this give up an electron? How easily does this take an electron? And so E cell is something we measure, but this E cathode and E anode, we can't actually measure these individually. And the reason we can't is there's no absolute energy scale. And this goes back to, you know, fundamental physics and Einstein's relativity. There's no absolute energy scale. And so all we can do is rely on relative energy scales, meaning we have to arbitrarily set a zero value, and then we can measure potentials relative to that zero value. And so to do this, we, we, we come up with this standard potential, uh, this basic idea of, of we're going to figure out an electrochemical driving potential of half reactions, and we're going to figure out what it is depending on the species that's involved. And so much like we did with our delta G's, delta H's, and delta S's, we're going to talk about standard potentials. We're just going to say under a specific set of conditions, we're going to have some value to describe the potential of individual species. And so here's the standard potential conditions. You don't have to memorize these just know that you know there's certain assumptions we do we're, we're going to compare apples to apples we want everything on the same playing field so we're going to say all aqueous concentrations at one molar or pressure of gases at one atmosphere the temperature is constant at 25 degrees C and we're going to talk about this in terms of volts or millivolts and so we're going to do this standard conditions, which means we're going to add this little knot next to everything. So E cell standard potential. We're going to have a standard cathode potential, standard anode potential. And so we can measure the cell potential, but we can't measure these individually. But ideally, what we'd like to have is a table of values that tell us what the cathode material potential is, what the anode material potential is, and we can calculate it for any combination of different species. And so we can measure this, which means we can figure out this relative to some value. And so that's what we need to do. We need to figure out relative values. We need to set a zero. And so what the electrochemical community has agreed on is basically the, the reduction of H plus ions. These are protons. These are put in acidic species like HCl in solution. You have a bunch of H plus floating around and those H plus can be reduced to H2. And it looks something like this. You basically have hydrogen gas uh, coming out of the system. You have H plus floating around in solution. Electrons come from the electrode. They turn H plus into H2 gas, and that liberates uh, the H2 gas. And so what the community has agreed on is let's set this as our zero value. This is a really easy reaction to run. It's, it's relatively straightforward. We're going to set this as zero. And so with that, we've, we've designated this as the standard hydrogen electrode, or SHE. And so you'll see values reported relative to SHE. It has said if this reaction is a zero volts, then everything can be scaled relative to this reaction.
And so if you're to zoom in, here's what's actually happening. H plus floating around from the HCl in solution, electrons coming from the electrode to reduce that H plus to an H dot, and then two of those H dots combine to give you H2 gas. So you're essentially moving two electrons, uh, two H pluses plus two electrons gives you two H2, and that's the reaction that's actually occurring. And so here's the half reaction, two electrons, two H plus, giving you two H2s. Um, uh, and that's giving you uh, the, the potential of zero. What the community has agreed on is this is a zero value. And we're going to measure everything relative to this. Because the important thing to remember is if this is giving up electrons to H plus to give it H2, that means that electrons are coming from somewhere, right? And so the other half of this reaction is not designated here. But we're going to set all the other half reactions relative to this reaction, which we've designated as zero. And so let's let's take this SHE, which is this side of the cell right here. So look Looking back, here's, here's a half reaction. We're going to combine that with another reaction. And so in this case, we have zinc metal electrode. We have zinc 2 plus floating around in solution. And so if, if, if these electrons are going towards hydrogen to generate H2, that means the electrons are coming from somewhere. In this case, this, this half galvanic cell or this galvanic cell made of one half reaction and another half reaction, it means those electrons are coming from zinc. And so in this half reaction, zinc is giving up two electrons to give you zinc 2 plus and two electrons going through the uh, external circuit. And so remember, the reason we're doing this at all is because we can measure cell potential. We can measure what's going across this, this, um, this wire. And we've set this as zero, which means we can determine a value for zinc relative to this. And so if we measure this actual cell, we'll get 0 0.76 volts. That's the electrochemical cell potential. That gives us this value right here. And we know this one, we've set it as zero because that's what we've agreed on as a community. And if we've done that, we know what the potential for this zinc reaction is. Why? Because we're calculating it, right? And so this is zero. We have a negative sign here. Rearrange it. We find out that zinc 2 plus going to zinc is minus 0 0.76 volts. And it's just this math right here. If this is 0 0.76, this is zero. This number has to be negative 0 0.76 volts. And so we can do the same thing with all different reactions, right? We can take HCl. Here's our standard hydrogen electrode that we've set as zero. We combine that with copper and copper 2 plus. Here's the half reaction. The reduction reaction is two electrons plus copper two plus giving copper solid. And then here's the uh, SHE reaction. We can measure this and get 0 0.34 volts. If we know this value, we can set this one as zero. We can figure out what the value for copper is. And the answer is copper two plus to copper zero is 0 0.3 volts. And so Again, to recap, the reason we've done this is there's no absolute energy scale. We can't just say, here's the total energy of the system or anything like that. Instead, we set a reference point, which is the standard hydrogen electrode. We take H plus, combine it with electrons to give us H2. We use that as zero and we measure everything else relative to that value. And so what we've done is we can make tables that look like this. Remember, we set our 2H plus plus two electrons to H2 as zero, and we can measure every other material relative to that. So we essentially make a galvanic cell where one electrode is the SHE or standard hydrogen electrode and the other one is these other re redox reactions and we can measure the potentials and what you'll find is some of those potentials are negative some of those potentials are positive and that tells us something about how much it wants to gain or lose electrons and so the more positive this cell potential value is the more easily reduced these species are. And so F2 would really like two electrons to become F minus and it has a 2.87 cell potential. Uh, on the other end, uh, this lithium, it really wants to um, give up electrons, which means it's more easily oxidized, which has a negative 3.045. Lithium really wants to give up its electrons and become lithium plus, and it's more easily oxidized. And so you look back at this nomenclature, these are more easily reduced. They really want their electrons. These species down here really want to give up these electrons, which means these are better reducing agents. They're willing to give their electrons to something else. These are really willing to take electrons from something else. And so basically, if you put any of these together, it says these want to give up electrons, these want to take electrons. In fact, if you put any of these together, it says um, these guys want to take the electrons, anything below it wants to give up electrons. And so Fe3 plus will steal electrons from I minus and so on and so forth. And that's what this table effectively tells us. We can put any of these two together and we can tell which way electrons want to go, which one's going to act as the reductant and which one's going to act as the oxidizing agent. 
And so this is really useful in terms of figuring out cell potentials. Rather than measure every single combination of them, these numbers, because we've set them all to hydrogen, we can calculate the cell potential of any combination of these two species. We basically look at the half reactions. We say, what are the values associated with them? We can calculate the cell potential. And so this is the number we want. We've tabulated a whole lot of these values. We can say, if I set any species of the cathode, any species of the anode, what's the potential going to be? And so let's take our example here, zinc solid plus and zinc two plus. Uh, this is the anode. This is where the uh, oxidation is occurring. And then we set a cathode copper two plus plus copper solid. This is where the reduction is occurring. And so we have our half reactions. We have the cathode reaction. We have the anode reaction. And we have the values associated with each of these half reactions. And so we look at them on our table. Copper 2 plus and 2 electrons, that's 0 0.34. We know that value. We have minus 0 0.76. We know that value. We can plug those into our calculation. And so in this case, 0 0.34 minus 0 0.76, we can calculate that if I build this cell, I will get 1.1 volts of cell potential from it. And that's assuming it's under standard conditions. And so that's exactly what you get when you measure this particular reaction. And so note the negative sign, it basically accounts for the flip. You don't have to do the flip, you just use these numbers directly and you have the negative sign here that corrects for that. It basically says, this isn't the reaction that's happening, it's the reverse reaction where zinc solid is over here but in this bookkeeping that non minus sign is already there so you don't have to flip anything you just plug the numbers in directly there's the cathode potential there's the anode potential relative to SHE and so if we put those together we get 1.1 volts and yeah, so we can do this basically any combination of them. We can hook uh, we can hook any of these materials or combinations of them up by a, a wire and a salt bridge, and we're going to predict what potential we'll get out of that um, um, device. All right, so in 17.4, we're going to talk about potential uh, free energy as well as the equilibrium constant K. And so what's interesting about this, this cell potential, we just calculated, we said if we take the half reactions and we put them together to connect a wire, connect a salt bridge, we're gonna get 1.1 volts and that's what we predict from our calculations. What this 1.1 volts tells you is that this is a favorable process. It basically says if you put zinc on one side and copper two plus ions on the other side, electrons will flow. You will get a cell potential of 1.1 volts, and it is a spontaneous process for electrons to flow from zinc solid to copper two plus and move those electrons to generate copper solid and zinc two plus. And so what it's doing is it's taking chemical energy and converting it to electrical energy via this wire. <clears throat> and this is a spontaneous process. If we tried to go the other way, let's let's say instead of, you know, zinc solid and copper two plus, we use copper solid and zinc plus, and we try to move electrons the other way, we're going to get a negative cell potential. It basically says it doesn't want to go that way. It's a negative value. It wants to go the reverse direction. It is non-spontaneous. Current will not flow from this, you know, soft solid copper wire to zinc two plus ions that just will not happen because in this case zinc um, solid zinc electrons move from solid zinc to copper two plus and this reaction does occur which means the reverse reaction does not occur and so this is not a favorable cell it's not favorable if you use you know um, zinc as the reduction and copper as the oxidation whereas if zinc is the oxidation copper is the reduction and so yeah a lot of nomenclature to go through there but the take-home message is this is describing thermodynamics it's basically saying this forward process is spontaneous this reverse process process is non-spontaneous. And so this cell potential is a thermodynamic parameter. It tells you what's the driving force for this happening. Is it favorable? Is it unfavorable? If it's positive value, it's favorable. If it's a negative value, it is unfavorable. And so uh, again, we since this is a thermodynamic parameter, we can tie it back to our delta G's. Our delta G's, remember, it's the Gibbs free energy driving force. It's basically our, our tangible version of delta S universe. While well, cell potential is saying, will it happen or won't it happen? That's related to delta G and delta S uh, universe. And so here's the equation. Delta G equals negative NFE 
and E being the cell potential. G is the Gibbs free energy under standard conditions. E uh, cell is the cell potential. N is the number of electrons or number of moles of electrons transferred uh, during a redox reaction. And F is Faraday's constant, which is basically the charge of a number of moles of electrons. And so effectively, we have a cell potential. We can either calculate it from tabulated values, um, but it tells us something about the delta G and the spontaneity of the reaction. Is it favorable? Is it not favorable? And so as we saw previously, positive E is a negative delta G, means it's spontaneous. Negative E means it's a positive delta G. It is non-spontaneous because of this negative sign right here. And so what's fun about this is we, we just have this calculation where we have cell potential related to delta G. Previously, we saw how delta G is uh, in relationship to equilibrium constant K. That was from um, uh, talking about our thermodynamics. And so it turns out we can relate cell potential and equilibrium constant and delta G all to each other via these equations. And so it turns out this is the relationships. All these are describing how much does it favor products, how much does it favor reactants. Uh, K is related to cell potential potential is related to delta G. All of these are saying, you know, how much driving force is there to go over products over reactants or reactants over products. And these are the equations that relate them. And so previously in chapter 16, we talked about this one, delta G is equal to negative RT natural log of K. We introduced this uh, equation here, delta G is equal to negative NF E cell. And we can do a little bit of algebra to combine those two to relate E cell to equilibrium constant K through this relationship here. And so the reason we'd want to do any of this is we want to know will this happen right we talked about spontaneous non-spontaneous we talked about favoring products favoring reactants and all three of these parameters are related to each other equilibrium constant cell potential and delta g and so we know already if k is greater than one it favors products which means it's negative delta g and it's going to be a positive cell potential if if k is less than one it means it favors reactants it's a positive delta g and it is a negative cell potential, means it's non-spontaneous towards products, it'd rather be the reactants. And then if K is 1, delta G is equal to 0, cell potential is equal to 0, it basically says reactants and products are equally favored and there's no, uh, no reason to shift one way or the other or no way or reason to favor products over reactants. But again, it's it's tying all these parameters together. So previously, large K is a small, it's a negative delta G, and that gives us a positive cell potential, and all these things are tied to each other through these relationships right here. All right, to summarize, we have a cell potential. We take this galvanic cell, we have two half reactions, and we get a cell, a measurable cell potential, which is the energy per unit charge available from a redox reaction. Um, this is essentially the, the driving force for this electrochemical reaction. Does it favor products? Does it favor reactants? This E cell tells you how much it favors, how much, uh, how much driving force there is to move electrons from one material to another. Uh, the hard part is, since we have no absolute energy scale, we can't, we can't just say, you know, here's half cell potential, here's half cell potential and put them together. We have to have a reference point. And the community at large has agreed this 2H plus plus H2, the standard hydrogen electrode, that's our zero value. We can measure every material relative to that zero value. And then we can mix and match those to figure out, you know, what's the potential if I put two, these two half reactions together. And so you can predict a priori or without, it, without actually measuring the cell, if I put these materials together and their values are something versus zero, I can combine them and calculate what the cell potential is. Finally, we closed out showing that the cell potential is a thermodynamic parameter. It's basically how much driving force is there to move those electrons. And if it's thermodynamic parameter, it's related to delta G, which is the spontaneity, right? And so E, e cell is positive, delta G is negative. E cell is negative, delta G is positive and non-spontaneous. It also relates to the magnitude of K. How much does it drive towards products or reactants? And products in this case meaning doesn't move electrons. If it does, then it's going to be a large K, uh, negative delta G and a positive E cell potential. And so yeah, all three of those parameters tying together chapter 16 and 17 uh, in a nice triangle of equations that relate those variables to each other.